slow. Well, a long second, wasn't it? <laughs> this is very slow today. Yeah, the countdown seemed to take longer than the actual Welcome three seconds. To quarter at the next. <laughs> I guess. I guess it's the Wi-Fi, maybe. This is Mike McFeely. <laughs> Look, it's still going. It's I don't know going what's going on. Slow. Sometimes I wonder about the Wi-Fi around here. Yeah. Hey, 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 Why is flying too fast? That's Richard. Yeah. Clark. Hey, so we were talking earlier on radio this morning. It was a kind of a cool conversation. If uh, you like music. If you like music, and we had uh, Ross involved in this conversation. He's 30 years old. We're talking about uh, rock and, we're talking about albums, not rock and roll, but just all types of music. And do you have an album uh, that you listen to, or maybe still do, where you can turn it on the first track all the way to the last track without, not, skipping. without skipping a track because... They're all great songs, according to you, on that one album. How many do you think you'd find in your album collection? I didn't have many. I had a lot. Yeah, that I, was, initially that's... I didn't when they first posed the question because we, I think we put this up on one of the our Facebook for the new, uh, for the uh, radio station. Right. Um, what album can you listen to, or what albums can you listen to from beginning to end without skipping? And I thought, well, that's that's kind of tough. The more I thought of it. Through the years that I started listening to uh, album music, which was about 1973 or so, so what do I got? 47 years yep. of listening to that's, albums, and that's your wheelhouse is actual yeah. vinyl records. and vinyl. When we used to go out and buy them, you know, in the in the in the in the cardboard container mm -hmm. and the press press paper container, boom, the vinyl, and you'd buy it wow. for five bucks or six bucks. I have several. Is that how much an album cost back then? Yeah, about five or six bucks. Yeah, because the, 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 what you call it, the little 45s were less than a dollar. Yeah, I, I remember that, um, but I'm only slightly younger than you, but uh, cassettes were more on my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. and they were like seven or eight yeah, bucks. Yeah, a little more. Yeah. They were a little more. Okay. Um, well, you know, you think about it, they pressed, if they got like, uh, Born to Run, for instance, mm -hmm. all they had was, and they might have had a track, but the, mostly it was the, uh, the, the LP, so they made a lot of them. And so, you know, since the hour and a half we were talking about it on the radio I've actually caught, thought of a couple of more that might fit that criteria See, so like it you, comes to you and yeah. you have to get out of your mind like I, I initially thought like rock and roll so I'm thinking Fleetwood Mac rumors uh, Fleetwood Mac just Fleetwood Mac Born to Run John Mellencamp Scarecrow Lonesome Jubilee and some R.E.M. so right there I had six now then, are you talking about pre-losing religion R.E.M. or yeah okay mm -hmm. Um, now then I thought about you know what Leonard Skinner I love Leonard Skinner and I'm thinking the double live album Live from the Fox yeah. one more from the road was it was a, like I said a double album so you got four sides there isn't a bad song on that uh, live performance and then we were talking today and I'm thinking like you know we have these uh, CDs I know my wife and I of um, well, Bonnie Raitt there was some Nick of Time Nick of Time Bonnie Raitt the whole album is excellent and I'm going to qualify it after this. And then, like, Nora Jones. Yeah. Okay? Um, even, um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say uh, the one I was thinking from, uh, uh, Natalie Merchant. I, I, I don't know if that whole album is worthy yeah, of, I don't, I don't of know. beginning that. But the first ones I mentioned, the Mellencamp, Springsteen, Billy Joel's in there, too, um, and Skinner, um, no doubt, beginning that. And I'd listen to them, and you know the lyrics you're singing along. Now, Bonnie Raitt and Nora, and specifically like Nora Jones, you can put it on, it's and pleasant, and it's listening. And clean the house. Clean the house, is. clean the, yeah. the outdoor porch, you know, yeah, the outdoor speakers. You just sit in the yard. Or grill, whatever yeah, it is you're doing. That's good kind of background. I like some of the soundtracks from uh, the, the musical, the instrumental soundtrack from Forrest Gump mm -hmm. is excellent. The, and from um, the, the firm, Tom Cruise, excellent music in that. Um, so. It covers a wide, a wide variety. I, I'm, I'm you know, now that you just mentioned that, there are a couple are a couple soundtracks I could listen to. Cadillac Records, newer ones, Cadillac Records, which is blues, Muddy Waters, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a fantastic soundtrack. You know, it's not necessary now. I didn't even thought about so that. soundtrack. So uh, we're talking about albums going from track one to track twelve, or how many they have on there. Nonstop, you don't cut it out. But I'll tell you what, what I listen to at the office, at the at the chamber office. I'll put on the soundtrack to Narcos. <laughs> Think about it. And it's all of that Spanish music that, that is the background music during the show, well, side which note, is good. I mean, side but note, it's you not need an to, album you need to listen second. to Gypsy Kings if you like that. Yeah, okay. I'll put yeah. that down on my list because right? I'm developing a list. Yeah, Gypsy um, Kings, Bambaleo, B-A-M, B something, Leo. We, um, we traveled to Quebec City one July 4th 
back in the back in the nineties, and uh, we were in Quebec. We were in Quebec City. Now is that middle, or is that up by Montreal? No, it's, my, it's above Montreal. Okay, it's above right. Montreal. So. Um, Toronto's over here, Montreal, Quebec yeah, City. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's further it's, east. It's, it's further east. And okay. It's further gotcha. out the St. Lawrence Sea. That, that's why I asked. Okay. So, so we fly in. The, we fly into Quebec City for July Fourth weekend, or it was about five days. We were up there. We're checking into the hotel, and we noticed that people around town were wearing these little pins, um, in odd shapes, very colorful, very artsy, and uh, it was the image of I think it's called Pocatella. It's a southwestern uh, mythical figure in Indian oh, culture. Oh, playing like a clarinet. Yeah. Ow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's. On, I'll, I'll bring in. I'll bring in the badge and I'll show it to you. And it had a little red, a little red illuminated light, and it, it operated by a small little battery on the back side. And I said to several. We saw several people wearing these, and when we were checking in the hotel, we we inquired about it, and they said, "Oh, you're up here at a great time. We're having the music festival in town." I said, "Well, what does that mean?" Well, for it was like twenty dollars Canadian, maybe twenty five dollars Canadian, which translated into about fifteen bucks mm -hmm. U.S. If you bought one of those, you were admitted to all of the venues in town, and it was a wide variety of music. This is Canada; it's French Canadian, really cool. It was an international music festival, and um, we saw outdoor event, outdoor concerts, just wonderful music. And then we went into this bar, and there was a, a gentleman from Texas called Ned Sublet playing. And it was Cuban Texano music, and boy was that cool! So we bought his his LP, and that's another one I can listen to that from beginning to end. So Ned, I mean, there's so much music out there, but Ned Sublet, I mean, this is a terrific album. So wow. I think when people sit down, if you if you do this little exercise, and it's kind of fun to do with family, or you know, if you if you're with you know guests from out of town, you haven't seen them 25 years, and rather than play a golf match with them, sit down out back and. Uh, Wow, I bet, talk about yeah. talk about hey, if you had you know, um, you know, to to think of albums you could listen to beginning to end, what would it be? There's a lot. Yeah, I, I've got yeah, a, I've and got you start you start thinking about like bluegrass where it's kind of uh, man, that could, that list could get long for some people. Yeah, especially like in bluegrass. I mean, a lot of that song to me at least it's like jazz. It's, it's, it's just kind it's, of it migrates sounds, all sounds together. Very similar yep. song to song. So if you like the if you like the artist style. That's kind of background. That might be an album like, hey, this is kind of, you know, if you're having a, a, a gathering at your house or something like that, or like you said, you're just cleaning the house, you just put it on for right. some background. And, um, and it just plays and you don't even really, yeah. you hear no, it. It's like that. I mean, nowadays you turn on, I have Spectrum Cable at home, and um, those music channels they have yeah. down at, yeah. in the, what are they, in the 1000, yeah. in, the, in the 1900s, right? And they'll have Mexicano. They'll have Caribbean, they'll yeah. have sounds 90s of the, rock. Sounds of the, I like the 80s rock. Yeah. That's, that's what I clean house to. Really? You know, because I like rock. the little blurbs they do, you know? <laughs> they'll say, you know, hey, the B-52s, I mean, like, where was the Love Shack, you know? It was wow. Like outside Athens, yeah, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. It was outside Athens, Georgia. So, yeah, weren't they from the University of Georgia? Isn't that why they got... Well, they, yeah, they tried to go to school. Uh -huh. um, they were from all over. Um, the... the um, the blonde, I forget what her name is, and the guitarist, and they were brothers. You know, Athens actually had a pretty good music scene. Yeah, I don't know how it is scene. now. Back when That's I was, Rory and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and others. Yeah. So now that you mentioned that, I do remember that because um, I'm I'm the MTV generation, so music's a little bit different in well, the way it's that, presented to us. I, I was I was 19 when MTV came out. Yeah, I, I loved mean, it. We were all about that. I liked, and then then VH1 then came in. Yeah, I liked it. Remember when they had the behind it. I love that. Behind yeah, the music. I loved it. Yeah. 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 Those are great. You know, it started out great for Fleetwood Mac. The band out of California had a, had a, a year it's tour always the same. It, but they then, go red and then they train wreck. But and... then drama ensued and drugs became the norm. <laughs> when we come back, Stevie Nicks talks about her ride on the roller coaster known as Fleetwood Mac. Those were great. Yeah. Yeah. It always started it. out great. Yeah. And then they went down. It's the rise and, then, and everybody's friends yeah. and then they get the money yeah. and everybody hates each other. Yeah, and we then, saw that coming. Then there's drugs and everything else and, yeah. you know, broke. The, then, the lawyer take all the money and, and behind the music continues <laughs> with Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> it's that, like the one of what's uh, Def Leppard and the guy, no, not Def Leppard. Um, one arm drummer. No, nah, not, the, yeah, they had one of them, but no, nah, Motley Crue where Vince killed that guy. Yeah. So I like that. I mean, those are I, I like those shows, uh, the behind the scenes or behind the music, and then I also like if they still do it. I don't know if they do it on MTV or VH1, but it's um, the the little bubbles that come up with the yes. uh, little tidbits. Yeah, yeah. The, did you know? And they always like to point out, like you know, it's like pop. 
like back, the Backstreet Boys was doing this video. It yeah. was really in this street, but they wanted it to be on that street, and they pointed yeah. arrows. Oh, I, I like they those. They put two. it because the city shut them down. L- little that, trivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I like those too. I, as far as the music goes, though, my, I don't have a lot, so maybe I'm a. I'm I more of a like, highlight kind of guy. I think it's the way you describe it on the radio. As far as my generation. You know, born in the early, I was 60, born in 61, early 60s. We came up, and our first experience with music was 45s on vinyl or, or LPs at record stores. Right. You are more of a playlist, more cassettes. More of a playlist guy, too. Well, right. yeah. I mean, I'm kind of tail at the tail beginning of that, but it, mine, I was cassettes. I mean, really. You know what the weird thing is? We never thought, you, you never think of this stuff when you're in the moment, but from time to time on the radio show, we have a guy come on named Mighty John, the record guy. He's out of Maine, but he has a, a website where the the LPs you bought back in the sixties, seventies, even the eighties. He's had some Madonna on on our radio show, where the album, if it's in, think baseball cards, yeah, collecting baseball yeah. cards. If the album is in really good condition, and especially if it has what's called a picture sleeve, with picture sleeve, especially the forty fives, the picture sleeve usually is worth more than the vinyl itself, and we're talking about hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars mm-hmm. for a 45 that may have cost 99 cents back in 1965. I've got one at home. The condition isn't good. I mean, it's, it's, it has the, uh, the, the pressed image of the circle inside the, the 45. It's a Beatles. Right. And in mint condition, it's like $900. Mine is nowhere near that, but it's probably worth $75. I'm trying to remember. We sold... Uh, at the record store I worked at, we sold. Did they call them bootlegs? Yeah, cutouts. Well, yes, they had bootlegs. Yeah, and but how did that work? So it, what we you know we, we we would we would go to because it'd be like triple the price of yeah, a regular. We record. we would go to uh, we had two we had several record stores in town and out where I grew up in Allentown. One was called Speedy's Record, and it was more the the pop bubble gum music, mm-hmm. the forty fives, and you know. Uh, the Partridge family would be there as far as albums go. Then down the street, a couple blocks down, we had Phantasmagoria. And it was long playing albums. And then, uh, like, paraphernalia. Like, they sold bongs, they sold the little pipes, they sold incense, black light posters. It was a head shop, basically, yeah. that sold records. Uh, they had they had several areas where they had first uh, uh, new released albums. And then they had cutouts. Remember the cutouts? Yeah. And I'm not quite sure why. I don't they remember were, that term, so. They were reduced. Okay. And I don't know if it was because they were, like, li- you know, those were probably, if you think about it now, those were probably the ones worth money today because they were limited edition. Mm-hmm. They just weren't, they didn't sell. They went into the cutouts. Then you had the bootleg area. Now, bootleg was, was pirated recordings. So we would How always. That work. Did somebody you know, bring that so in? So somebody, yeah, somebody would go to, like, for instance, like a big bootleg. You remember this too? A big bootlegger, uh, boot, bootleg concert would be getting a Bruce Springsteen concert because they play. He played so many places, right. and he played in small venues. Someone would tape record it, and then transfer it to vinyl. Yeah. The quality was horrible, but the fact that hey, here's a and, and it would be a nondescript album cover, and it would say Bruce Springsteen live from the Stone Pony. August sixteenth, nineteen seventy four. Had a lot of Grateful Dead of that. Yeah. So, the, but I was, was going to say not me. That's but. what I was going to say. So uh, the the uh, the musicians like Springsteen, like Billy Joel, those they weren't making any money off the bootleggers because they were coming in there. Right. right. So all lo and behold, here comes the Grateful Dead, and they said, Hey, they you know care. what? Record us till the cows come home. And I, I, before I, the internet. And I think that before, decision worked out better for them. Before cell phones. Yeah. So people were going in there. So the Grateful Dead had all kinds of recordings out there. In addition to their albums, and they, they didn't care. No, they didn't but care. But they broke the mold on that one. Well, I think some of my records um, from the early 80s and late 70s would be worth, some of them would be worth something because it was the early days of hip-hop. And these were not real labels. So a lot of this stuff is being pressed independently at these yeah. little boutique places, and so some of those are worth a little bit. Um, nothing like you know a first print. You'd be Beatles surprised though, but you'd be surprised because there's other. When, when we talked to Mighty John, the record guy, I didn't know this, but there there's some albums like um, Beatles, for instance, and it might be Abbey Road. Now this is worth nine hundred dollars if it's in mono. If 
it's in stereo, wow. it's less. Of, it's a hundred. Wow. So you have to look careful. I've never even thought about that, yeah, but yeah, I get it. But you have to look careful. And so if it's mom, so what he does is, and this is amazing. He's a he's a, he's a gentleman. I haven't met him because he hasn't been down here. But he's in Maine. We've talked several times on here. Sounds like a really cool guy. He's he's an older gentleman. And he probably came up through the '60s. Probably was a radio guy. Yeah. yeah spinning yeah. discs, right? So he lives up in Maine, and what he does is, you know, he goes to estate sales, he goes to yard sales, and, just buys and you know, the the grandson is selling the uh, contents of grandma's house, doesn't know what she's got, and she might have an Elvis 1955 recording <coughs> there, and it's um, 25 cents, and he'll say to the guy, you take 10 cents for it, yeah, and sure, and I said, what do you do then? He said, He's there. He was happy with the deal, I'm happy with what I got, I walked back to the car, and I got a $500 yeah. record. You know, I would have to look through my dad's, um, the reason I listened to what I listened to is my dad was listening to a lot of Motown when I grew up, mm -hmm. and he so a lot, a lot of that. He does a lot of Motown. I would need to look through it, yeah. my, and my mom's got pretty much all the Elvis stuff. The um, the British Invasion, when Beatles came over in, in That's 64. That's a little bit past my parents. And you so. get to, but you'd be surprised. I mean, we were doing, we were we did a whole section on Motown, um, and there's a lot of value in, in those recordings. And also like Madonna, believe it or not. Really? And it's you know it's the forty fives, it's the albums, but it's that mono and stereo. I don't know why. You know, really? Like, yeah. So you have to check that out. Um, so because you know I got a um, when I the, back then you know it wasn't as connected. So we went to in eighty four we were in California, and Madonna was just hidden. Mm -hmm. When we came back to Virginia, it was like a good six months later before it hit in Virginia. And I had bought some Madonna 45s yeah. in California. So I wonder if stuff like that. It's not so much the playability of, right. the, of the album itself. It's the, it's the, it's the how it looks, it the is condition and it's in. So you, I bet you guys, if you have, um, if you're our age and your parents are still alive in, at their house, I bet you the stuff you had as a, as a teenager is probably still somewhere in your parents' house in a milk crate like mine was. The, the 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 thing is the challenge is what condition is it in but yeah. you might you might have something we've we've talked about records that you you and I have heard the artists I can't just pull them out of my head right now where the value is five six seven thousand dollars yeah so there's people out there buying that stuff which is but it's the picture sleeve uh, the I picture can, sleeve is huge uh, I know that um on the very top of my dad's stack because it was a stack in this cabinet was is was always the Righteous Brothers. It was just he didn't listen to it. He's had it just happened to be he's there. Had you righteous know, brothers randomly, on. that was always the one on yeah. top. He's had Righteous Brothers in there. You know, this isn't like like baseball card where you need Ty Cobb his rookie year or Pete Rose rookie. This it's is just random. It, it just happened to be out there, and they yeah. pressed a lot. I mean, Elvis, you know, on Sun Labels, you know, yeah, uh, Sun Studios or whatever. Um, you'd be surprised. I bet my mom's got some of that now. Cause, yeah, um, she should check that out. And she has all Mighty that. John, the record guy. He's got the website. You can see all the, the prices on there. You can subscribe to his website. I'm not plugging him, but I think he's a, he's a really cool guest when he comes on Coastal Daybreak here. And as always, does, he does 10 records. He starts with the with the one with the least value, and then we usually end up talking about one that's five, sometimes $10,000. Well, you know, not to get too far off topic, but it's still music. I always kind of laugh to myself because... My mom grew up in the Elvis era when he was first going on TV mm -hmm. and how they said it was morally blah, 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 and all the stuff you hear today yeah. from parents. So I guess it's like every parent generation prior sure. said the same thing because yeah. it's kind of, I've heard it now two separate generations because I'm get, old enough. As we get older, the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. Right. You know? right. I mean, the next you know, generation, like Ross is coming through, it's their turn. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny turn. to hear that now, how they did it, you know. Well, you know, to the records and to this to this Mighty John, the one hit wonders too have value. Oh God, I bet. Think about that. Yeah, I bet. You think about like I don't know how many like records the Beastie Boys put out. Did they put out a lot? Oh yeah, they've got plenty. They got plenty. That, I don't. I wonder. I don't think. Did they do albums? Yeah. I don't think they could. I don't think they could hold an album or from one to the last track all the way through. Do you? Yes. First. Really. One, first license to ill. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that where the Beastie yeah. Boys? Yeah, that's I the very that first. That's the very stuff. first. Uh, uh, you got to write the party. Yeah, and, and ironically, is that on that one? Uh, yeah, fight for your right to party. That's yeah, a good song. That's on that. That's one. a great song. <laughs> ironically, Rick Rubin produced that. Um, did the music for it. That's why it's got so much rock and roll in it. Mm -hmm. Side note: Rick Rubin is the only one, only person to win a Grammy for hip hop and country. Um, and there's another who, genre. He did Johnny did, Cash's album that won the Grammy. Who did the Who did the guitar riffs? And you got to write the party. 
because um, they don't play musicians. They don't play he, instruments, he, do they? No, they don't. They um, rap. I mean, they're out there. Yeah, the three of them. Um, the Rick Rubin. Because they would did be like Eddie Van Halen would do some. Yeah, you know, they, they sampled it. a lot. That was prior to the actual rules with that. You I'll know? tell you why. Because it's like Led Zeppelin. As much as people love them, do you realize that? A, I'm not exaggerating when 30% of their, their stuff is flat stolen. You go back to words, the riffs, I mean, the music. Taken, they, they stole it or, or? They took it from somebody else and re-recorded it and claimed it to be original. There's, there's been lawsuits on that. Oh, they and, paid, and, and they paid yeah. uh, the guy from Cadillac Records, they paid him $12 million. Yeah. But yeah, you go back and look. They, are, they took from um, Howlin' Wolf, they took from Muddy Waters, they took from... Uh, and it, I'm not talking about a sample like Vanilla Ice. I'm talking about the words, the whole nine yards. Um, plagiarized. Yeah, and plagiarized you're like, wow. music. I and you, you call it original. But yeah, that's what blew my mind. They're classic. Uh, but to the Beastie Boys, um, I, Beastie Boys song. That's my wheelhouse. I that's when, when I came you, up. When you have a what's that song called? What's the fight, fight for your right to party? That's a song much like B-52's Love Shack. When if you hear it on radio, you gotta <laughs> listen. I love that. I'm mean, just like oh, and I'll tell you some uh, Tone Loke. Yeah. You know, with the I mean, you talk about more cowbell. You, you right? know how, how much you know cowbell how is that? Is that's more cowbell than Bullies to Cole has? Yeah. It, right. So, Tone Loke. That is now it's like 30 years old. I know. I know. Think about that I for know. a minute. As a matter of fact, they're and, and, using they're using Bust a Move, which the guy that wrote Wild Thing, which is that's good low, too. Yeah. was <laughs> Young MC. Young MC yeah, yeah. wrote Bust a Move. Well, they were using Bust a Move on a commercial for something, and I was just like, "Wow, that song well, is and thirty-five you look, and years old." You look old. at the video on that. You know, it's fun. It's just I mean, you watch it, it's fun. And now I'm sure people at the time said, "That's horrible." Look at them up there. You know, you, know, you look at it now; it's tame. Oh. You know. Uh, you look at some of those videos and you're like, woof. Yeah, but it's so it's so not, uh, raw's not the right word. They just said, okay, shoot a video. Okay, they didn't know what they were we'll doing. We'll go into we'll go into Lower Manhattan. We'll shoot it. Uh, yeah, they didn't we'll know. Shoot what it on Tenth Avenue. They just didn't know. They what just they shot doing. away, you know. Yeah, but well, that's a song. Um, and, and Beastie Boys and, and, and then Tone Loke. When you hear that come on, that, that, right? <laughs> yeah, and there's a couple oh, yeah. of other couple others that would come. To oh, that, well, if you grew up in my era, there are MTV staples that for because of the constant playing you know you just recognize them and you still know the words because like when I was a kid I was a latchkey kid mm -hmm. and there's nothing on TV between we got out of school at 2 and when your parents got home at 5, 6, 7 o'clock so you just put it on MTV yeah I can see Robert Palmer well, when I say Robert Palmer what do you think of the girls dancing yeah, the black in black dresses yeah. playing guitar you know pretending to play the um, uh, instruments I mean, what a bizarre what a bizarre setup for the, for the video what was it How'd that song go? Addicted to love. Addicted to love. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the girls were just yeah. like they almost had like pasty white makeup on and black dresses, all the same size, same height, the, and the, just trying to play guitar. Yeah. You know. And Huey was, Lewis was big then. Oh yeah. Um, all the MTV people, obviously Michael Jackson was. Um, you know, they just were. Home sweet home. Madonna. Madonna was Madonna, had cut, Madonna was cut, probably cutting edge videos like she like was a, yeah. like a virgin. Her and Michael Jackson really changed the video production thing. Mm -hmm. um, they started doing it a little bit. Different. It, 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 it well, Jackson was already a star, and Madonna would be. But while MTV propelled people that like Robert Palmer, you would have never thought never. And then the claymations that was uh, out of the Genesis mm -hmm. crowd, Mike, uh, the, 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 the Phil Collins and, and Genesis. But then it also did the opposite on some uh, like some Journey. Bands. Like journey, like because they were big in the seventies. They were huge, huge, and all of a sudden, you know, you heard this voice, and it's Speed like, wagon. boy, she's she sounds great. No, that, that's Rick Perry. It's a guy. Wait till you see him. In yeah, his skinny jeans. Yeah, plant, but it's it, it killed them. It, they, they just couldn't make that 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 transition. And, and it made a lot of bands and and people of every generation said, oh, the music's not as good, and they some and at one time, but every generation has a group of these bands that are. Hit for a little while and then gone. And Every then generation. You think about you mine know, is the Go Go's and stuff like that. that. Yeah, the Linda Carlisle. But then yeah. you, th you think about uh, we got to run out of here. Yeah. The bands that made it oh, wow. on MTV but were great rock. I never forget. I think I was in high school. I was in high school. It was either 1978 or 79. And you're gonna. I was. I was a, a dork, but we were going to the Key Club convention. In <laughs> oh my God! In Downingtown, Pennsylvania. So it's a it's a forty five minute bus ride. Club. We always a, wonder what the Key Club was. It's a service. Obviously, it's a service I never did it. It's from the Kiwanis out in town. We did good stuff. <laughs> so we're going to the Key Club convention, and somebody put in a cassette, and it was Van Halen. Oh, oh my 
God. That there's an album from yeah. from first track to last, and it's like, what is this? But you think about what okay, it was, so it was heavy rock and roll. Well, they made the transition, and it was Eddie. You know, it was named after the Van Halens. Yeah. But who's the star? Of the David Lee Roth. Because of videos. Because yeah. he was a showman, and he yeah. knew exactly what worked on what video. Worked on, his on videos video. where he was terrific. Yeah. He was the front man, the showman, and those videos were just dynamite. To this day, you you walk on um, the tour guide, ice cream man. Well, real. I mean, good lord. From from for this musical story, and so most people probably won't like it, but um, NWA, the mm-hmm. gangster rap, the my introduction to them was I grew up with a kid that was um, let's say he was country, white kid, and he had a had a Mustang. Correct. And I remember getting in the car in 1984. He goes, "You got to listen to this," and it was him. That's how I heard it for the first time. This. Country guy that didn't really listen to rap music, oh, you he, know. He, he introduced you. To yeah, him. he said, "Listen, this put the cassette in." We drove around, and I remember thinking, "Wow, wow. you know, what is this?" Yeah. And that, that's just odd to me that that's how I was introduced to that. Yeah, well, that was good. He work. knew I like rap yeah. music. Why he played, and, and, it, and but, they too played into the MTV into the. That's what, that was my point. Yeah. Is that yeah. by the time they came around in uh, 85, 86, 87, the things that started to change video wise. Yeah. They kinda knew what they were doing a little bit. Well, so they at, weren't as bad. Look at the look at the three amigos from Texas. Three yeah. guys on stage that weren't really too attractive to look at, had a great sound. Yeah. But what did they do? They tore it up. And they came up with their little trademark. How they did it with the with the key, the the uh, the, the old cars, the, mm-hmm. the, the, and, the, the, and girls. And hot girls. Yeah. 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 They figured that out. They figured so. that out. And that was the elements that, that just made ZZ Top. Well, yeah, I mean, 